Peace to all of you who truly love Jesus Christ. Today, the Lord has it on my heart to speak about who we call brother and sister in Christ and why that is very important. You know, before I start this message, I want to say that just because we don't call someone brother or sister or because they are still in the world or because they have a false doctrine or they've been deceived, it doesn't mean that they aren't still owed the debt of love. You know, we don't give up on these people. We still hope for them. We still, you know, are patient with them and long suffering and, and kind and gentle, you know, to those who um who are humble and not stiff necked. You know, we still give correction and, and are patient in these things. So, you know, just because they're not a brother or sister, it it, it doesn't mean that we do something wrong because we don't call them brother or sister. We actually are being obedient to what the Lord taught and we are protecting ourselves and those that are around us. So I want to share this scripture here. This is uh, 2 John chapter 1 starting at verse 9. It says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. This is... A very important thing because what the Lord is telling us here is that who you bring into your house and see he's not talking about bringing a sinner into your into your physical house to eat dinner with you and where you can you know minister the gospel to them or he's not talking about that he's talking about your house who you allow into your spiritual house into the kingdom of God that is within you. If you are allowing people that don't have the same doctrine, the truth, into your house, then the Lord is saying that he will judge you for that. That you you can cause his name to be blasphemed because you, when you call someone brother or sister, you are giving them an approval. So when they go out and talk to other people, they say, yeah, these are my brothers and sisters over here. And they teach a false way. They teach a lie. Then you take part in their wicked work. Because you did not prove all things. You did not test every spirit. You just, because for, for what you say is love's sake, you want to receive people quickly, but we should be slow to call someone brother. You know, I remember Paul, when Paul and Barnabas came to Peter and the other apostles, they did not just right away receive him. They were questioning, they were testing the spirit that he was of. And once they perceived the grace given to Paul by God, then they gave him the right arm of fellowship. Then they received him as a brother. And this is the example that we see. That we are to call men to repentance. And once repentance is done, then we receive them into our house. But not before. Before we are testing and, and watching the fruit. And you have to be careful here because a lot of times you want to be quick to call someone brother because you see good fruit. But what does the Lord teach us? That a good tree doesn't bear bad fruit. So what confuses people here is that they see good fruit and they say, oh, that's a good tree. But then they start to see some bad fruit and it confuses them. What does that mean? Can a tree bear both good and bad fruit? No, it cannot. 
A bad tree cannot bear good fruit and a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. If there's any mixture, then it's a bad tree. It's a bad tree. Does that mean that people can't stumble and make mistakes? No, but those that are in Christ walk upright. They obey God. They fear God. They seek out his way, his pleasure. They are new creations having all things of God. They are like a city that sits on a hill, not able to be hidden with living water flowing out of them. This is how we test the spirit to see that it's of God. The Lord gives us many ways to test. And we are held accountable to test those that have understanding. And see, in Revelations, the Lord talks about uh, churches that they they have um, faith and they, they have labors and they have all of these things. And, you know, they hate evil. But the Lord says, yet I have some things against you. Because you suffer that spirit Jezebel to teach my people and to deceive my people. See, these people didn't test the spirit that was among them. So they allowed Jezebel to come among them to deceive people and lure people away. And the Lord says that these people need to repent. He talks about a people that has people among them that hold to the doctrines of, of Balaam and the Nicolaitans. Because they did not prove all things. They did not test the spirits. So it's very dangerous to have the children of Isaac mix with the children of Ishmael. This is talked about in Galatians where you, where the Lord is warning that these two spirits are always at battle and that the, the spirit of Ishmael, people that are still under the law who have not come into grace will always battle against those that are of Isaac. So it's very important that we make a difference, that we test every spirit, that we prove all things like the Lord tells us. It's why Paul, many times with tears, he says, day and night for years, warned people that wolves will come in. He said, even amongst you sitting here, these elders that he was talking to, he said, even amongst you, some will turn away and draw people away with you so for those of us who can see and have discernment we need to be testing the spirit not just giving a false love love rejoices in the truth love tests the spirit love cares about souls is zealous for souls and see many of you you would judge Jesus Christ as unloving because he went into the temple of God and when he saw people selling and buying and he saw the Lord's house being defiled he was zealous and he turned over tables and, and he threw those wicked people out of the temple he whipped them out of the temple so where is the temple of God now we are the temple, those that are in Christ. So will you be zealous if you see a temple being defiled? If you see buying and selling going on in someone's temple, will you be zealous to go to them, to cry out to them, to flip over tables if necessary? And if necessary, to whip them out of the temple, to make a right judgment. This is what we are called to do. So it's important that we go on to maturity so that we can do these things and that we continue in these things. Not looking back, not getting weary and well-doing because it gets hard or because people come against you or because people don't understand. But we continue in the truth, in the narrow way, the hard way. Not seeking for an easier way where 
uh, men can, you know, be okay with us or having respect to persons before so that our families can be okay with us and so that everyone can be a part. It's not up to us that everyone is a part. That, that is up to God. He set the standard. We just keep his standard. We keep his way. We keep his way and we love his way. We delight in it because his way is righteous and, and he wants a pure people. Just as it is in heaven here on earth, he wants a pure people, a peculiar people. And that's why the, the, the example set in Acts is so important because those people were that people. That was the standard set for us, the example set for us. That all people spoke, that all of those people spoke the same. They had all things in common, every heart the same, everyone having the same doctrine, no one looking at anything as their own. And that's the example shown to us throughout all of Scripture. Where people make right judgments. Where Peter made a right judgment against Simon the sorcerer. Because he wanted to uh, sell the gift of God. He thought that he could buy it. And Peter made a judgment and said, Your heart is, is not right before God. Repent. It was a judgment made. He said that you won't have part in these things. So, you know, I wanted to give this an important word because many people are deceived about this and, and they believe that it's okay to call whomever they feel is a brother, a brother. You know, they, they believe because someone cries when they pray or because they help people and they do all of these things. Look how they look at their hearts and how they love people. But if they don't come with the same doctrine of Christ of God the doctrine according to godliness the doctrine that says that you have to forsake all that you have that you have to hate your life in this world then they don't worship in spirit and in truth and their worship is in vain and we are to warn these people that is love that is a love for souls is to do what is hard to say the things that people may not like. And the Lord told us that we would be hated. We would be persecuted for his name's sake. So we don't shy away from it. We love him more than our own lives. We lay our lives down at his feet. Be blessed.